Hello everybody, welcome to Hiru with his Dwarves versus Andy Devo with his Orcs, uh, blue and red. So we're going to do this game, started a little bit early while I was doing the other replay, so we're just going to watch the first five turns on replay and then catch up with it live. So I don't know who won the toss or anything, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised for Andy to just choose to receive. Deep kick, terrible for Orcs there, pretty terrible. The good thing is he's against Dwarves, so it doesn't matter too much. But the weakness of Mr. Throw can't even reach the ball. Absolutely terrible. Punching things. Classic. Classic Blood Bowl play here. <laughs> Punch things, hope for the best. I wonder if he should have done this other block first, right? Oh no, he didn't have, he didn't have the assists. No, he couldn't have done is he trying to get a three dice? He is, isn't he? Yeah, he's going to blitz him there and then come in here for a three. Good. Probably should have moved this guard up here first, right? I've got a feeling this guard is going to be up here. Okay, I would have put him, I would have put him there because of the Slayers, right? I would have put him one in because of the Slayers. Should have moved him before the bit, but I mean, you know. Very, uh, very marginal. Turn ordering issue there. So yeah, the thing, even with this ridiculously deep kick and a pretty narrow setup from Andy, there's still absolutely zero pressure from the dwarves because they're just too slow. Just stay in front, hold the center. The biggest thing I think you can do, basically, against orcs or dwarves, is just hold the center. And then at least if they if they can't just smash through the middle, you know, by making them take a bit of time to go to one side, you are slowing. They're already slow, and you're just kind of slowing them more if they've got to go down the side. I mean, this is pretty smart from Andy, right? Make out of 3D because because he just knows that the uh, the dwarves can't react <laughs> and apply any pressure whatsoever. So like. This positional cost isn't so much of a positional cost. It fills the pickup. Uh, fills, so he took five squares to get there. And then next turn just fails the pickup. <laughs> Amazing. Well, this certainly explains how the dwarves were behind the ball when we picked it up on turn five. Because this sure is tempting now to get forward a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, it's funny because I was saying, you know, like you want, you want to keep all of your players in between the ball and the end zone. Um, <laughs> I was like, why Why is this runner behind the ball? <laughs> well, now we know. <laughs> the corner kick, the failed pickup. But the problem is, yeah, you just expose him to a mighty ball blitz, aren't you? That, I mean, that is the, that is the problem. I feel like just holding the center was the play, it just, Dwarves are just too slow to be even pre like, but it feels bad, doesn't it, to not pressure this? Like you surely have to. Like you'd feel like you have to pressure this. Oh, surely, surely he's gonna get the ball this turn. Yep. Yeah. Oh, double GFI, wow. That's fair enough, isn't it? Get them out, out of the way earlier as possible so that if you fail and uh, drop the ball and cast your throw, at least you've got a, uh, you know, at least you know you can get it with a blitzer now or whatever. <laughs> Gives you a bit more time. Oh my God, there's the death. <laughs> and the apple. Turns into a serious injury, but Andy takes the death, which is, you know, very nice of him, isn't it? I like that. Double skulls. Probably had to re-roll that. Yeah, good, good. I'm happy you moved the, the Slayer back there. Probably they should have probably been one over, honestly. And like maybe he could have been one over as well or something. And uh yeah, this is Andy's turn five. I think this is 
This is the last one, and I think we take over it live at Hiru's turn five. So he's got to he's got to block them away, hasn't he? Ball's a little bit tight here. Is it like he's just going to one D the this guarder? He's going to have to, isn't he? It's a bit dodgy. Like he has to one D this. Yeah. Oh! Doesn't re roll it. Hello, everybody. We join the live cast of Hiru versus Andy Devo on turn five for Hiru. Um, as you can see, Andy has got this dead blitzer with a accompanying apple fail. And uh, he's milling around midfield on turn five. Has got really zero penetration, but there is a. Is this a runner behind the ball? There's a runner behind the ball, which is not a great place to be, right? You don't want anybody behind the ball. You want everybody in front of them, stopping them making progress. We've got a stunned uh, Troll Slayer here, which isn't great. Uh, but, you know, overall, not, not a bad spot for Hiru. And, uh... Oh, this is... this is We don't get the engagement question because we would have done the replay, right? We can do the replay for the first five turns. Oh, raids from Elliot! Glorious! There's a spot for you in the booth if you want, Eliod. And also, uh, you know, do you think scrolls have hands? Do you think scrolls have frenzy? Uh, I mean, they, we do. We know they have frenzy. Do they have? Do they have hands though? The thing is, they're out. They're agility four. They're nearly a good ball carrier. Uh, thank you so much, Eliod. <laughs> Welcome, Eliod Rainer. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I really don't like this. This guy. Behind enemy lines, I, re I really don't like it. I want, I want all my players in front of the ball on defense as dwarves. Pretty much at all times, right? Unless something really serious is happening, I want all of my players in front of the ball, in between my opponent and the end zone, not just you know letting them get past me for free. But you know, at the end of the day, like he's, he, he is at least he's trading off, right? He's trading off and. And this guy who's level with the ball is somebody behind, so... Like, it's not terrible. It's not terrible for Hiro. What, what, Hiro's running out of time here. About to go into his time bank. For the first... Time in the match, or maybe he's paused? I don't know. Because you can't really tell right on a replay... On, on spectating. You can't... In Blood Bowl 2, the clock ran down like they were running down. Um, so, yeah, you couldn't actually tell if it was paused or not, but who knows. This looks like a gaping hole, doesn't it? When I say it looks like a gaping hole, it is a gaping hole. Already it's a gaping hole. <laughs> but it's going to be really, really bad in a second. And you know, this stun. I go, okay, you couldn't help the stun. But this guy back here, right? If this guy was here, or whatever. Then he's uh, he's doing something, and it the extra player that he's trading off just isn't worth not having a player behind the ball. In fact, this guy needed to be like here, and this guy here, and then he would have been safe. But uh, yeah, this is just an absolute. I mean, this is obscene how how gaped this hole is. <laughs> This is, is this a blitzer? No, oh, that's a lineman. Uh, where are the blitzers? The bright yellow ones. Okay. Well, they're 
not a good spot to hit the ball, are they? Right, we don't need the rings. Yeah, this is... Uh... Oh, do we need the colours? That's the wrong button. <laughs> oh god, yeah, yeah, no, these dwarves. These dwarves look horrible. <laughs> Let's not have those dwarves have the real colours on. Yes, I mean, this is a, the perfect breakthrough turn for Andy there, right? Just mashed around for a few turns and then got the big breakthrough. And this looks uh, very, very difficult. I, I don't hate dodging off with this blitzer here, actually. I didn't think he would. <laughs> it's a one day with mighty blow. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't have hated, like, dodging to get another player up there because, you know, if... If Hiru makes his GFIs and like what you can 2D this guy, what oh sorry, don't like that. Don't like that. You've gotta you've got like 1D this guy, right? And then 1D this guy, and then you get this guy into the ball, this guy into the ball, this guy's already there. This guy needs to uphill him, he comes into the ball. Like you just need to go crazy for the ball this turn. You just have to because it's just too bad. I mean, that kind of does similar thing. <laughs> but, uh... It's just not quite as good, right? Because these guys could have been out of the way and stuff, basically. I think he had a GFI up. So he's gonna... He's gotta blitz the front one, right? You've gotta, you've gotta hit the furthest forward orc. You can't hit the back one. But yeah, this is the problem, right? Now you you look, you know, like you look at the team, and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dwarves are behind the ball, which is just not good, is it? Now, by the same token, obviously, nearly all of Andy's team is behind the ball as well. So you know, this isn't this isn't great for Andy, right? Now it's a decent recovery by Hiru, but I think it would have been a lot better to have. Uh, to have come around and like, you know, GFI'd with the uh, Slayer or something. And it's it's what kind of why I wouldn't have minded dodging this guy off to just get something up there. But then obviously if it fails, you're in more trouble, aren't you? So it's not easy. But you know, the problem is in these kind of games where like, you know, both people are good, you need those, like, you need those extra three pluses and stuff, right? You need those extra, you need the extra pluses to your chances you know not just like you see all these people on reddit saying that blood ball is just a risk mitigation thing roll as few dice as possible it's not it's not the truth it's just not the truth right you have to you have to roll the correct amount of dice <laughs> and you know whatever whatever gives you the highest chances is what you have to do and the the better uh the better your opponents are, the tighter the game is, and the more risks you've got to take to win, right? You can't, like, you know, if, if Artemis is playing versus, you know, Scrubby McScrubberson, yeah, you can just make block, you know, blockful blocks and dodges with do dodges with dodge and blocks with blocks and everything's a 2D and, you know, everything's really, really safe. But, you know, if, you, if you're playing against Andy Dave or Hiru or Strider or, you know, uh, Artemis or Sol, or, you know, this is the funniest thing as well, right? If you're playing against Sol, yeah, you can't just make all block blocks with block, right? Funnily enough, the thing that he rubbishes his opponents for the most is just necessitated by the fact that they're playing against him, you know. So, so you 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 can't just do all safe moves all the time. You have to you have to do kind of crazy moves and stuff to to make something happen. Yeah, that, that that big and being free was really bad. I really like this. Uh, was the uphill necessary to get the troll slayer? I think it was. I think you had to try and just push this big and so that you could double GFI with the troll slayer. Like that sounds crazy, right? But I just think it's kind of what you had to do to get a bit more because this is just you know almost too easy for Andy, isn't it? I guess you can uphill this guy for a push. In fact, you can uh, you can one D him because you can uh, you can you can two D this guy and then that gets the guard there. 
You can actually two do them, can't you? No, no, not really. And you could two D that guy and then one D him or one D him and then two D him, whatever. And then one two Maybe you have to 2D this guy, actually, right? Maybe you have to 2D this guy. Oh, you've got that player as well. Oh, amazing. So you get to 2D everybody, then. You get to 2D everybody. Glorious. So, yeah, 2D this Blitzer, and then you need to power him. And then you've got 3, 4, 5, GFI, GFI, 1D. That's got to be the play. Got to be the play. He comes up, he blocks him, he stands there, he comes in there, he 2Ds him, powers him, and then he goes 1 to dodge him, 2, 3, 4, 5, double GFI, yeah, yeah he'll, he'll get this hero. Fun, funny isn't it that, that uh, this guy going down has made this possible. He has to assist from, from this square, right? Yeah. Doesn't get the pow, has to re-roll it. Does re-roll it. Good lad. Good lad. Love to see it. This is the play double GFI for a 1D. Oh, instant one! Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Double one. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> well, great play. You know, because it was the same one I thought of. <laughs> but no, it was a great play, wasn't it? But um, just what can you do? What can you do if you don't roll the dice? You don't roll the dice. But you know, that's the thing. Maybe if he'd set it up, you know, the turn or two before, right? Things he just decisions he made during that half, right? If he could have had another player back, then uh, maybe he gets to do that without GFIs, and instead rolls a skull into skull on the blitz. <laughs> but that's it, isn't it? It's never, it's never just like a GFI or whatever, right? There's all, there's all the, it, the, you know, the position is is a result of the cumulative decisions and dice over all of the previous turns. So, you know, you can't just have... You can't just have Christopher turn over on turn 16 and win the game for you. Though though he's been pretty good at that, this <laughs> this competition. Um, so, yeah, you know, there's probably a few mistakes Hiru made in that drive that led to that breakthrough and, you know, having so little cover for it. But in the end, I mean, that wasn't, that wasn't too crazy, was it, right? Like, it was two Ds for pushers. And then um, a 2D for a POW. And then a double GFI for a 1D. It's actually pretty likely to stop that. And you know, he's he's up a blitzer for the second half. So it, he can get a draw at this. The, pro the problem that Hiru has is a draw isn't great. It's, it's not bad. It's not bad. But it's not great. You know, you're getting the point where like it's <laughs> he's gonna have to win his last two games to qualify, um, and he's dwarf, so he can't really he can't realistically try to win this game, right? I, I don't. I I only think he would have to suicidally have to try to win the last two games. I think the this game he can still just try and get the draw and hope that's good enough. But if this was game four. A draw wouldn't be good enough, so he'd have to like score in like you know three or four turns and try and turn over the orcs, which is obviously suicide and won't work. He's got a reserve, so obviously he has to foul here. It's the law, and he could uh, he could get Andy down to ten players. Does not. So yeah, 
this is uh pretty bad pretty bad for uh hero because like the problem is he's dwarves against orcs so even though he's removed you know a slight upgrade it, it's only like plus movement plus armor and block isn't it compared to what the player he would be fit like you know, obviously be benching the thrower so he's got plus movement plus avian block which is a pretty decent upgrade but it's no nowhere near the same as you know losing the mighty blow one or losing a block or a guard big and or a guard blitzer who's got the guy oh <laughs> hero has got the cheerleader <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think Andy's got two assistant coaches, yeah. It's a real shame that you actually need cheerleaders to get the cheerleader models right. Like, you know, the the Blood Bowl two animation when he scored touchdowns and stuff it was a good little immersive thing wasn't it and it's kind of sad I think that we've lost that the old orc cheerleaders for <laughs> What the hell is this random guy doing over here? <laughs> Why is he there? Literally, I mean, it doesn't really make any difference, right? But it's funny that he's just he's just there for no reason. To be fair, all the uh, all the dwarf block, you know, it stands them in good stead for getting more knockdowns than the orcs, doesn't it? And they've got thick skull, and they've got a um, apple, so they're not totally uh, they're not totally without hope in this contest. But it is pretty grim as dwarves versus orcs. Hits one of the guys with block. Did not like. I would have rather been hitting the, you know, he, he was right here, right? He could have, uh, he could have been hitting the uh, Mister Throw there behind this guy. If you, you know, he's given up two blocks here. He would have only given up one to have done that. Didn't, didn't like this at all from here. We could have just not blitzed. I think just not blitzing is better than giving these hits away. You've traded one two D for two two Ds. That's. That's negative EV, isn't it? I mean, that is not good. That is not good, Hiro. Trading a block for a block here maybe isn't too bad, right? You're hitting a defenseless armor eight, and you're giving away a hit, and you're and you're not necessarily giving away a hit if you've got guards in and stuff. But this is just absolutely giving two hits away. Just, we'll just leave the LOS down. I quite like leaving the LOS down versus dwarves because you know the bodies just get in the way a bit anyway. And then you can wait for a a better time to stand them all up at the same time. You know, like chain out the body or whatever, things like that you can do. Yeah, look how isolated this guard is now. Like that just was not worth that blitz, was it? He go, does go for the stand up on a dodge. I don't really like that. Honestly, I would, I'd have just left him down. This kind of like encourages you to go for this hit now to try and rescue the guard a bit, but he's not. 
Oh god, he might just get. St well, he, I don't know what he's done now. Oh god, oh god. <laughs> he's just basing everybody. <laughs> I mean, this guy is uh, is very much in danger of getting surfed, right? Just punch him, punch him, and surf him. Like Andy surfing this guy all day. This is, and it's not like a trap surf. It's turn two of the half. It's costing Andy nothing Hunter, to surf this base, guy. Base, base, base. This won't fail. I'm on the right. You have to, you have to support. So now you've got two players over here, and you've got to support over this side as well. This is uh, pretty disastrous from Hiru. Oh God, more than pretty. I mean, this is horrendous. It's more than pretty disastrous. It's it's absolutely horrendous. <laughs> And like, look, it's hard, right? It's hard because orcs have got loads of strength and loads of guard. Like, it's not easy. Um, so now you just block, right? Now, now you just do your block. You might not even go for the surf, like honestly, because it's it, because he's so in such a strong spot. Anyway, like, <laughs> so it was it was a much better surf before Hero had split his team in half and made his ball baseable. <laughs> <laughs> but because the rest of Hiru's turn was so, so bad, <laughs> you can actually get the ball hit here. You can actually just literally hit the ball. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, this is gone. This has gone really terrible for Hiru. So, um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him, you know, just block this guy. Just block him with the big and even, right? And then get the and then block and do all this. This guy could blitz him and then, uh, so you, this guy could block this guy and pound to there and you could put the thrower in and you could blitz him and chain him and then okay it's only a 1D because you could bring someone down maybe but um, it's something you could do right or you could just blitz this guy, block this guy, blitz this guy. That's probably the best one. I think, I mean I, that's what I'd do. I'd, I would not have done that. I would have, I would have, I don't know, I don't like this at all. I would have blocked him and then got this guard in here. So you can block him. And then you can block him. And then you can blitz him. And then, and then, and then his position over here is demolished, right? That's what I would have done. Once he's made it demolishable. <laughs> Once he's made it demolishable, I would, I would duly demolish it. <laughs> <laughs> if he hadn't made his position so demolishable, I would have surfed this uh, this blitzer. But he's just basically asked to be demolished. But now, it, now Andy's made it a bit more difficult by the fact that he hasn't got this guard on to plug in. Oh, there you go. Look, he surfed him anyway. <laughs> and that guy, okay, okay, we'll use the apple, but this was all just from that blitz that he just should not have made on turn one. Yeah, so he's, now he's having to blitz there to free up the... See, he just didn't need to do that, right? The, the big one could have just blocked, and then the, the blitzer could have gone in. He, was, he would have had the blitz over here as well. So he's he's had, he's had cost himself this blitz to get the guard big and in over here. Which isn't ideal. It would be much better for the blitz to have come here on armor 8. Much better. But, uh, you know, he didn't. Oh, and he's punching him instead. I see, it's just way worse, right? It's just totally way worse. He, he could have blocked, he could have blocked this one and he could have blitzed that one. And like, obviously he just got a push, but like they could have been two pals, right? And then he would have had the ball based. He'd have had another guy there and it would all been horrible. It's quite good that he's got somebody deep, but he could have got that anyway. Hero, I guess, has to try and like swing back around now. Back to the middle. Should probably be moving his ball carrier first to make sure it's protected. Safe moves first. And I guess maybe he's blitz this guy up here. Because, you know, there's a, there's a little bit, a hint of over-pursuing from Andy here. Just a hint. 
You know, if you look at like this half of the pitch, you've got three players, and this half you've got three, four, five, six, seven, right? And you've got one in the middle, so switch around in the middle. Put him there so you've got a screen. Blitz him. Move up. Or just keep running forward. <laughs> the dwarves are really slow, yeah. And orcs are fast now, right? The movement five is, is kinda crazy. So Hiru can Hiru can lie to himself here <laughs> and think, oh this gives me a chance of winning. <laughs> <laughs> but um you know realistically realistically it's giving Andy a chance of winning you know it's Hawks uh, you know dwar Dwarves are not the team to score early and turn over and score again oh so this lets him hit the mighty blower eh this isn't terrible at all Oh, not how I would have done. I would have actually blitzed the mighty blower and then blocked the uh, big one. Like th this guy, I would have come in and blitzed him because he's got the guard defense, but you would have had two guards of your own. And then you could have powered him to here, and then you'd have had two guards there, and so you could have blocked him as well. But he's still got the blitz, hasn't he? But I don't know where it is or what it does. Could still be around to this one, right? And then screen off he hasn't blitzed he's made a turn without a blitz which is a bit ropey isn't it because something could have blitzed somewhere um i wouldn't have hit blitzing him there and then you know you can screen off this big one maybe or something i don't know yeah yeah he did have to cover the back didn't he to be fair but then you see you would have kind of covered that back if you'd done the blitz that i suggested because then you've got two guards here and then you're blocking this guy so then you've got the screen as well so that follow you know kind of stopped all of that i, I didn't mind i didn't mind my way of doing it <laughs> um but you know this this is kind of all right isn't it and he's probably trying to think of is there some kind of some kind of you know chain play and uh, i mean there is an easy chain play right you just put the problem is it's a this guy isn't guard, right? If this guy was guard, you'd come in there, you'd block him, chain him into there, block him, and then you're happy. As it is, you've got to power him, which he does. So, there we go. So, yep, this is looking pretty terrible. <laughs> Just need to push. Gets it. And you can just block him for a push, right? You'd, you'd rather blitz... You know, he's, he's tired, so he can't do it. So you've just got to push him. This guy's just got to push him away. And you can actually blitz him from here, right? You can you can tag the Slayer as you blitz him. Because you strength fall. If you want. I mean, he, he doesn't want it to. I would have actually... I would have actually much preferred to blitz from here. Because I've got the assist. So I'm going to hit from here and then push him up so the ball couldn't have gone to the sideline if I powered him and you know it still you still ended up so you could have still ended up in this position anyway right if this is what you want it's got a GFI to tag the uh, slayer to stop the instant surf Yeah, he could have. He could have. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If he'd hit him, if he'd hit him from down there, he could have. He could have uh, double based him, which I would have preferred. I just vastly preferred hitting him from down there. You could have powered him and then like not even followed right, so you kept the slayer base yourself, and then you could have gone for recovery with a, with a blitzer if you want. It just gives you so many more options to hit from there, I think. And the you know assured zero threat of the ball going out of bounds, which you know if the ball had gone out of bounds and got thrown into here, all of a sudden that's pretty good for the Dwarves, because the Dwarves have got three players over here. They really want to get the ball back over this side, or at least back to the middle.
If he pals, okay. I, was, I wonder if he's just going to... Oh my god, he's re-rolling it. So I guess he was definitely just going to score if he powered. He could surf him, right? He could just surf him here with a slayer. But he doesn't surf him. Does he do another re-roll? <laughs> Does he use another re-roll? But then he's got to dodge as well. You can't, Hiru. You can't. Oh, this is a disaster. This is an absolute disaster for Hiru. <laughs> oh, dear. He does re-roll, but the problem is you've still got to dodge with a ball carrier. This is the thing. And like GFI, right? You've still got to like dodge and double GFI. I think. Is it a double G? I think it's a double GFI. Oh, he cast him though. Yeah, it's a dodge and a double GFI. Gets the dodge. <laughs> All three rerolls gone, one turn and fails. And that's why he probably shouldn't have done it. <laughs> he could have just not rerolled the blitz. <laughs> He could have just not re-rolled the blitz and then gone back, right? But there you go. All re-rolls down and failed. Plus it was scoring to lose. <laughs> it was literally scoring to lose 2-1. Was the play, right? Like, this is the thing. This is the thing. Even if you score there, you're just giving Devo a five-turn drive as Orcs against Dwarves. And okay, you know, you didn't know you were going to cast this guy. But chances are, you you know, he scores that nine times out of ten or whatever. So Yeah, that wasn't... I can understand why he did it right. It's like, it's a pretty desperate situation. And he thinks this is the, you know, the only way I'm going to score at all. But, you know, that does, that does happen. It do be like that. It's a, it's a blitzer. It's a tackle blitzer. A tackle blitzer and, uh, and a bigger. Um... So, you know, it, it, it is like that, right? Like, you know, of course, it's a bit desperate, right? You're, you're dwarves against orcs. This is a bad racial matchup. And, uh... Oh, wow. Davos out of rerolls, though. He made a blockless block. A blockless block! And now... It's suddenly a bit more uh, interesting, isn't it? Flip me, guys. And that was pretty shit, to be honest. Because <laughs> he had he had blockful blocks here, right? He could have just blocked there and then blitzed here and then or, or whatever, right? Or, or block there and blitz there. You know, if he wants to serve, right? It's Dave or he probably wants to serve. <laughs> but um Yeah. It's surfing's all right. It's not that good, though, is it? It, it, it? Ultimately, it's just not that good. What you have to do is get people on the ball and pick it up. And not do that. <laughs> not do a GFI after you've picked it up. <laughs> I guess, I guess he's got nothing to lose because even if Hiru scores, he still just wins anyway. But yeah, you could have just stood there. You could have just stood there. Why would you GFI? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Well, there you go. Um, so Hiru used all of his rerolls. <laughs> all three rerolls to fail. <laughs> And then got gifted the touchdown anyway by Andy. So now Andy's suddenly with four turns without a re-roll. Um, Hiru's, uh, you know, it's paid off, right? It's paid off for Hiru now. Now suddenly, what looked like he was spending all of his re-rolls to give Andy a five-turn drive with a re-roll. It's given him a four-turn drive with no re-rolls. I think you have to go a bit wider here, right? You have to stop the penetration. You have to stop the penetration here because you just can't let them get down down the field for free. 
But then on the other hand, you you need to be able to react as well. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's hard, isn't it? Doors are so slow. Like if they go in like you know chevrons, and all the orcs go to one side, then it's really hard for your slow orcs to get in the, back into the game, isn't it? Whereas this, yeah, you're giving him free forward progress, but at least you've got dwarves that can react. I like that. I like the Christmas tree formation, though. This is good, isn't it? Christmas tree. That's what this is. Not the dwarf box or anything. Fails the catch. That's a really great, really great event for Dave. All right, gets him. Right, it's a huge difference, right? If if he doesn't get that kickoff result, he's got to go five, and he's just got the ball here. Oh my God, he's instantly double sculled. Instant double skull. No safe moves first. Instant double skull. Now, surely this will make Hiru do some safe moves first. <laughs> Dwarven arrowhead. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, actually, it would, be, it would be from the other way up, right, wouldn't it? So it would be like something like um, the V. The not flying V. The Dwarven butt plug. Now we're talking. <laughs> Yes, the dwarven, but I actually quite like this setup. Of course, Hiru hasn't hasn't taken heed of this and hasn't made safe moves first. No follow here, right? Kaz, oh my god, oh my god! So this get this gets him a player through. The runner straight through, and I guess like Slayer's basing things and stuff. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Flip me, guys. Yeah, you got it. You got to base the big in there. Yeah. Yeah, the pickup's very scary. I mean, everything's scary without rerolls, right? Everything's everything's scary now. Like even bloody two dice blocks. Four times safer than the pickup, and the first one failed. This is lovely. That's a lovely GFI. Everything's based. Not nothing for Dave or here. Like nothing. There's there's a two dice block, a blockless two dice block, or a a two dice with block that frees up a guard. That's probably the only thing you can do, right? He just has to do that, and then he goes one, two, three, four, five, bases him, and then he picks up the ball. That's about all he can do. Stand him up. Blitz him, base the runner, pick up, and then just try and hang on for the 1-1, one, one, I guess. Uh, I mean, that was the only block, but I mean, he, the, the blitz is just way better than that, right? The, the blitz is, here is fine. Probably has to follow, I think, honestly, because that's, that that occupies two players. Okay, yeah, it goes in there and that gives him the hit. That's better than just tagging him, isn't it? But the thing, well, it's not really just better, right? Because if he if he'd gone two squares below, he's nearer the ball, and you know offers a bit more support. So, but then this gives you the payoff of getting the block. It's not obvious which is better. <gasps> oh my god, he's double wanded! He's double wanded! <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Well, here we go. He's got two runners as well. He's actually got two runners. So he can clear both of these guys here, right? Because he's got a guard, so we can just pow him, pow him. And then he can get both. This runner can just go directly. Oh, he can't GFI though. I don't think without rerolls. He's only got two turns left himself though. Maybe he has to GFI. Maybe this. So block, block. He G he should have blitzed, shouldn't he? Oh, maybe there's no way for him to. Maybe there was. 
Like maybe maybe you know other blocks should have been made. Like he picked them up really quickly, right? Maybe he could have blocked here. Then this guarder could have like come around or something. Do you know what I mean? And uh, like geified, and then he could have blitzed. Like so that maybe this could have all happened. You know, or something like this. I you know oh, no, because this has to be the blitz. I guess he didn't have to. Maybe, maybe, maybe he doesn't have to blitz the uh, thrower, does he? All right, so he's got guards on, so he can blitz this. So this has worked out perfectly. This has worked out perfectly. Well done, Hiru. That has worked out perfectly. Or he's worked it out perfectly, rather. So you, actually, what you could do is just put, just move the, just move him down, right? Just move him down so he's there. I think that's the best play without rerolls. Just move him down so he's on the ball and on the throw. And then you try to double GFI blitz. So it, it adds it adds an extra GFI, but it, it's like made the whole thing safer. And that is what he does. Do you have uh, frenzy trap here? Because if you push and then pow, you've only got a 1D here anyway. Whereas if you just straight pow, then you've cleared it with less dice. So he does do this where... Because now he still needs a pow, right? Does he? Or does he not? Kind of needs a pow, gets it anyway. Yeah. This is the problem, he kind of forced himself to need a pow there. But he gets it. 75%. Here we go. Double GFI. Oh, no, he's already blitzed, so it's just a single GFI. Fails. <laughs> single GFI fails. Flip me. Well, there's basically nothing for Andy, is there? He's got nobody free. Uh, he's got nobody that can dodge except this big one. Which seems a terrible idea, big and dodge. So it's just a one D with the uh, thrower. I think that's surely all there is. Oh, I don't know. Maybe he's not. Maybe he could have. Uh... Maybe this guy could have blitzed, right? He could have blitzed. Oh yeah, this was the play. This big and should have blitzed, right? One, two, three, four, five. There even. Yeah, this big one had to blitz. And then come back here and then he 2Ds him. Oh, he just makes a dodge and two GFIs. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> that was that was very poor. <laughs> Cause now 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 this is but like this is greedier, right? Like this is so much greedier. It was way better, it was way better blitzing with a big one and then just getting him down there and then two dice blocking. It was just way better than um, than having to roll a 3 2 2 that could have easily failed and then there's two players there, one which is already standing, instant 2D on the ball. Like that was so, that was definitely wrong. That was definitely a million percent wrong. But, um, got the dice. And you know what? Um, Hiru got away from the draw, which got away with the draw, which is, uh, <laughs> you know, given the state, of, given the state of his like turn twelve or whatever it was, <laughs> that's pretty amazing. Because <laughs> that was a bit of a, it was a nightmare drive. I mean, it's always a nightmare drive, right? Versus, yeah, and Andy should just end the turn here as well, right? There's no, there's no casualties. Difference isn't a thing. So there's no point like, you know, uh, making blocks or anything. Yeah, yeah, the instant one in 36, like, lost Dave or any chance of the win, right? Like, just pure dice. You know, like, that's the thing, right? There's, there's a lot of dice in the game, isn't there? It is It is a dice game. Um, so, you know, that's going to happen. You know, did, should he have made that blockless block to, to try and get the surf, you know? Probably not, right? So, like... The surf was okay, surf, you know, it was okay surfing that guy, but he didn't need to, did he? Uh, what he needed to do was secure the ball, and uh, and there you go, he didn't, so there you go, a draw. 
a draw for Andy and Hiru. That's three draws for Hiru now. Um, I mean, that's okay, right? He's he's staying in it, but it's uh, they're not wins, and you do kind of you know you want to win at some point. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not leaving himself easy. He's got to be Artemis and Sol in his last two games. And, you know, maybe he just needs to win one and draw one or something. But he probably needs to win them both, honestly. It's, uh... Well, maybe not, actually, because it's actually really tight. It's actually really tight, this this division is is really tight. If you, if you wait a moment, I'll, I'll put the, uh... I'll put the, uh... Updated league tables on here. If you bear with me. Yeah, what a game. This this division is, is actually super close. Way, way closer than my division. Um, so, you know, Group B, this isn't it. Group B is actually super tight. And they have finished, they have finished week three, so that is cool. And he goes back to top of the division after that uh, after that win, so he's still fine, right? But I mean, he's going to feel a little bit robbed, isn't he? As you say, with that uh, that dub skull there was really real killer. But you know, that's the thing, isn't it? You know, like he he had three or whatever at the start of the half, right? So could he have conserved them before? Right is the question. Like, should he have had no rerolls at that point? And he was definitely a little bit greedy trying to get that surf in with a blockless block, where he could have just made block four blocks to uh, try and secure the ball. But of course, he would have wanted to reroll the uh, the pickup, and maybe would have done the GFI. Maybe doing the GFI would have been correct if uh, if that troll slayer hadn't been surfed, <laughs> actually. So. Uh, yeah, I don't know why he did that GFI. That GFI was very odd. But there you go. And, uh, right, here we go. Bear with me. Oh god, misclicked. <laughs> There we go. That's the table. Dave on Cruz with four points. Hiru and ODL with three points. Sol and Art with two. So they're still very much in it, Sol and Art, right? Like, even though, like, it's so tight. Only two points between top and bottom. Um, anything can happen if Sol or Art win the last two games. They're definitely going to be in with a shout of qualifying. Obviously, Hiru could end up winning his last two. Olivier could. Um, that's going to be super interesting. A lot of draws. I kind of expected with the dwarves, right? The dwarves are pretty expected to get a few dwarves in. <laughs> a few dwarves. A few draws in. Like, they don't have the privilege of the uh, overtime that improved them in the uh, playoffs and play-ins and the NAF kickoff event as well, actually. The, the overtime really does help them, I think. You know, like, this is why dwarves do not dominate tabletop events because they're just not that good at winning games. Really good at not losing, not great at being able to force wins. Uh, but terrible at being able to force wins, in fact. So there you go. So that, that that's the situation after three games. And uh, actually, I should have I should have bloody put up the fixtures for next week. Never mind. I did not prepare the fixtures for next week. I do apologise, but I can tell you what they are. They are Andy Devo versus Sol, Artemis Black versus Hiru, and Crucifer versus Olivier Dulac. So there you go. So actually, um, you know, it could be everybody could be on the same points, I think. Could they? No. No, no, they couldn't. But, but like, you know, Sol and Art could win. And that'd leave you on four, four, <laughs> four, three, <laughs> and then Cruz and Olivia could draw, and that'd be like five, four, and it just everyone would be on like five, four, four, three, and stuff. So super close, super interesting. 
And there you go, that's that. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.